Hey, Nicole, what did you learn today? Uh, I learned today that uh, if I had proposed to you, you would have felt weird. So women <laughs> proposing to men for some men is weird. Weird. Yeah. Takes my power away. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, and what did you learn this week? I learned that you don't know the difference between locusts and cicadas. <laughs> wow. Not to out you here at the top of the podcast. You're going to put me on blast right. at the first 30 seconds of the podcast. Right. Okay. Right. right. All right. And hopefully by the end of the day, you will have learned the difference. <laughs> So join us for another episode of the Hall Space Podcast. (laughs) See you soon. Welcome to the Hall Space Podcast. It's about connections. I'm your host, Dr. Rich Hall, and this is a weekly conversation about whatever and however I see to connect things. For people who want to connect, chat, and learn a thing or two about a thing or two. Without further ado, let's start the show. Hello, hello. Hey there. Welcome back to the Hall Space Podcast. I'm your host, Rich Hall, and I'm here with my lovely and capable co-host. Nicole Hall. Hey there. Hey. And so we are back again for another show. We are. We are. How are you? Doing pretty well. Can't complain. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. How about yourself? Doing pretty well. Doing mm-hmm. pretty well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just a day. Yeah. It's not a particularly, you know, spectacular day. Nothing wrong with that. No, we're sort of on the cusp of a number of, you know, like schools ending. Yes. Um, the kids will be out soon. The kids will be out soon. They've got three days left. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am starting a, I started a new job, kind of. Yeah. moved to a different team and so mm-hmm. it was kind of confirmed that I would get a full time offer so that's pretty exciting nice, too nice. yeah yeah and so now it's like switching from uh, this you know remote learning school brain job and picking Victoria up to the summer brain where okay how are we going to get these kids how are we going to keep them enriched essentially yeah, so, yeah. keep them active during yeah. the summer yeah, so we have our niece, our 17-year-old niece, Jaden, come in to um, watch all five of the kids, which includes our three, and then our twin nieces um, every day. So that'll be interesting. And she's really excited about giving them activities and, you know, having them do stuff together. So I think that'll that'll be cool. It'll at least keep them out of my hair while I'm working. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. It'll be an interesting summer, no matter what. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Different than usual. Yeah, and last and summer was interesting. Yeah, last summer was interesting too. So it was, it was like our first quarantine summer, and it was like, mm-hmm. what do we do? What can we buy for the backyard that'll keep everybody sort of, you know, engaged? Yeah, that's when we fun. got the basketball hoop. We I keep basketball. saying we should get them uh, bikes. We just haven't done that yet. True, 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 true. Um, but your daughter has claimed that she's not going outside until all the locusts are gone. The cicadas, <laughs> yes. She's very yeah. <laughs> concerned about the cicadas. She is, and she's noticed them, and bugs really freak her out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 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 So this is Brood X. There's a name uh, for and them. They come every 17 years. Yes. Yeah, so 17. there are different broods that come up. Uh, a lot of the more typical broods come up every 13 years. Okay. Uh, but this brood in particular, uh, this group comes up every 17 years. Okay. Uh, also known as the Great Eastern Brood, uh, this according is to the CNN. 17 year. Okay. And it ranges from Tennessee to New York. So it's Jesus. a pretty wide uh, area that they cover uh, on on the country. And um, they are already, they've already emerged. People yep. have been sending pictures 
yep. on the on the Facebook of them. Uh, our tree is covered with them. I was going to say literally covered. When you say they cover mm-hmm. the span, yeah. they cover the trees, they cover the grass, they cover the Yeah, brick. there are shells everywhere they in our front yard. They can stick to near, literally anything. And it's yeah, they're on the side of the house. Mad growth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they let off a noise that's pretty deafening. Uh, it's pretty you loud. You can't not hear it. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a symphony, man. It's you're hearing it for, yeah. you know, you're hearing multiples of them just singing yeah. uh, with their wings. Well, uh, you know, I like to make a statement about that. So yeah, so you know that they're locusts, and you know what they sound like. So like when you step outside, you keep you're like saying locusts, oh, locusts and cicadas. I'm sorry, are two different, cic- locusts not to and be an entomologist are... here or anything. No, I do uh, know two that two different loc- species. I, uh, of I, bug. You, I'm sorry, locusts yeah. are always around. Correct. Cicadas yeah. and locusts are different, yes, right? Yes, um, but I've right. always, I hey, listen, I know what I'm. I, cicadas are loud, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's like you go outside and you know that it's them, so it sound, it feels like they sound louder. But it's sort of like we came from this uh, super quiet winter because mm-hmm. winter everything seems to be really quiet. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, it was very quiet because nobody, not many people were out. Like no was one was out on. really. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And 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 you know when the snow blankets everything, there's just like well, silence. Uh, it's comforting. Snow actually does dampen sound, so huh. it actually makes it it makes it quieter. So right, so you go from that to mm-hmm. cicadas mm-hmm. chirping. You know, I, I would venture to say it's no different than uh, crickets, right? I mean, um, you know. yeah. I mean, where we're, we're talking about just being outside and then the constant noise, right? yeah. the constant sounds. I won't call it noise, but sounds, you know, there's something for me like summer, like when you hear cicadas and stuff like that, like that's it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't feel that way about the cicadas. though. let's be clear. Mm-hmm. I want them to go away. But here you mean hearing crickets during the summer makes you feel a certain. Yeah, there's like this. It's like, oh, summer's here, mm-hmm. you know, and that's because you're used to living in. A relatively country area like there's some yeah. people who are from cities who can't stand the sound of crickets because they're just not used to that correct sound at night but yep. Yep. Uh, and that's often like in movies yeah uh, and i remember wasn't that the wire where you know he didn't like the he, uh, wallace sound. went out to the wallace to, went out to the, the to country, country to stay with his grandmother he didn't like the sound of the crickets. he's like what is that sound <laughs> he didn't know what it was well in the city you're not used to that sound yeah you hear, well, no. yeah. You hear sirens you hear people you hear ambulances mm-hmm. you hear you but know, you don't hear helicopters, crickets the whole but time. you do not hear crickets. Yep. Yeah, so that's a that's an uh, alien sound. Yeah. You sure, right? Yeah, I spent the summer here when I was nine. When was the last time they saw you? When I was nine. What's that? What? That noise. Crickets. 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 Uh, it is. So our neighborhood went from very quiet, and I kind of was like reveling in the quiet this week because I just knew mm-hmm. once they got out of the ground, it was going to be a thing. They were going to be everywhere. So I yep. went for my walk. I took the dog for a walk like three days ago, and uh, that was the first time I saw them. There was a tree down the street where they were just. Uh, congregating, like there were a few walking around, and yeah. some had crawled up uh, up the tree and were coming out of their casings. Yeah. So I got some pictures of my phone. Uh, and uh, so the interesting thing was when you said you took the dog out mm-hmm. for the walk, and you're like, "Oh yeah, there were cicadas out." I'm like, "And you kept walking? You didn't turn around?" I, mean, like, I was out at that point, already... and I did the whole walk, uh, and we're done that day. So, and I had uh, I had Victoria with me. She came back. Yeah, no, no, that was the first walk where she did continue with me. That was where. Uh, Daniel got scared. Mm-hmm. That was the day where Daniel got scared because one of the dogs down the street got out. Oh, that's and right. And it was a little terrier, so he wasn't really. Yeah, like, he didn't and bite. he's like, he, just, he looks like the 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 tramp from the Lady and Tramp movie, and he's this little barky little guy. His name is Teddy. Yeah, is that his name? <laughs> that's his name because when I the first time when he yeah. got out, I walked to the front door to get his mom. Yeah, I feel like it. So there are pieces of this story. So okay, Nicole yeah, and I yeah. went on a walk last Sunday. Mm-hmm. And when we went, it's on our street. We went down our street. This mm-hmm. dog got out. He just kept jumping on the fence until he fell open. And we see him every time we take the dog on a walk. But this time he was like, he got unhook out. the latch and I'm yeah. out. <laughs> and so he came running up on us and barked at us. And our dog got kind of happy like and excited. Little, yeah, he looks like the little tramp. And he's just like, mm-hmm. bah, 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 bah. and yeah. T'Challa just sort of like, we going to be friends? Yeah, he wants to play. Friends? He wants to play. And so... I walked over and I rang the doorbell and the mom was like, Teddy, 
how did you even get out? I was like, yeah. he just flipped the latch. He wanted to get out that and Nicole time. Nicole almost picked this dog up. And I'm like, you don't know that He's dog, He's a little Nicole. guy. I'm like, you, like can I just pick him up? That's how you get bit in the face. Like, that is don't how just you be get. picking up stranger people's dogs. Folks, that is absolutely how you get in the face. And, and let's be very clear. Like, our dog is 80-something pounds. Yeah. But this little guy, I bet you he'd rip my face off. Right. And but I didn't think about that. It's yeah, little like, dogs uh, honestly end up injuring people more than big dogs. Than big people dogs, know yeah. to be afraid of big dogs. <laughs> yeah, and but little like, dogs, they're like, oh. And then they're like. Pick him up and take him to his mommy. And the dog's like, don't you contain me? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You got to watch little dogs. Uh, and so, yeah, she. Uh, so, and so days later, I'm, t- I'm walking with the kids and the dog gets out again mm-hmm. while the guy's cutting the grass. And uh, the dog runs up on uh, uh, us again. And I send Daniel over to the house to let him in. And Daniel, by the time we get back to our house, we're just passing our house yeah. for the rest of the walk. I like to walk down our cul-de-sac. Uh, walk back up the back up the street. Yeah, when I, when I go, um, the dog Daniel's like, I need to go in the house and sit down. He came all the way he's back so home. Freaked out. He came, but all then the he way. calls me on. Uh, well, he comes the, all the way the back. So, yeah. So what happens is he comes all the way back home. He was like, I don't have a my fire is dead and I need to call daddy. I was like, mm-hmm. well, just use my phone. Yeah. So he calls you and yeah. then and we're up around the corner now. Yeah. We're like way up the street. And he's like, where are you? I wanted to go. And I was like, you said specifically that I was done walk that you were done walking. He came in. He was like, I don't want to do this. Anymore. I'm done. Yeah. But then, then five minutes later, he's he calmed like, down and he yeah. was like, I need to call daddy. Yeah. And I didn't know that he was going to say to you, where are you guys? Yeah. He's like, where are you? I want to, I want to come with you. I want to finish the walk. And at this point we're like blocks away. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, we're heading back soon anyway. Yeah. Um, because yeah. we did the short loop that time. So there's a okay. small little street we can loop down and loop back up towards yeah. our house. Yeah. It's just a little uh, quick, you know, round round the block thing. Um, but yeah, uh, that we, we were at the first house where we saw the cicadas, where I saw more of them. Yeah. And realized, oh, this is going to be a lot. And this is going to be a thing. There yeah. weren't any at our house at the time. Like the, At was, the time, there was wasn't. dark. It. Correct. And I walked around our tree and I was like, I see a couple, but not. Yeah. Not as many that like two days later, yeah. our tree was like covered in them, like yeah. covered, covered, like too yeah. many to count covered. There's a lot. There of were them. a lot of them. And today is the first day that they started singing and making all of the noise. Yeah. All of the noise. Yeah. 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 And it's not, I think because there's, they're so creepy and because there's so many of them, it's different than crickets, which you, they're hard to catch. You don't really ever see them. It's yeah. Sort of, a signal of summer but like these crickets is like rah, apocalypse you keep you keep interchanging crickets so, I'm cicadas. sorry cicadas listen cicadas crickets me, and locusts listen, all different animals uh, okay let's creatures, be creatures all different creatures hi but. hi my name is Nicole Hall yeah. and I am going to use the words locust and cicada interchangeably yeah on and, accident and cricket interchangeably uh, no 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 I know what I'm saying when I say cricket no no you just yeah did I mix that up you did again yeah. I'll I'll hear this later. I'm just trying say, to help you out here. I, you you trying to help me? You make me a better person. Well, you know, <laughs> make you better for the future. I, I yeah. No, I like I, I apologize. Locusts and cicadas are different. Um, yeah. And I I remember I don't remember what I don't know what brood it was back in eighty five in uh, Cincinnati. This is before you guys moved here from yeah, Dunbar, I had moved here. I moved here in nineteen West Virginia, and yeah. I remember. You know, I had to been, you know, eight, nine years old, something something like that. And I remember um, they're covered the streets, they're covering the trees, they're everywhere. They don't see very well, so they fly into you without really knowing that they're flying into you. And they can stick to, ne- to nearly anything. And so during that time, I remember having to walk to school and just being grossed out. And, mm. and it just, you know, I mean, you get used to it because you got to you got to walk to school. That's what you're going to do. But yeah, yeah. But it was, I remember it was just so horrific to me. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it, it is getting worse, right? Like we're getting to see more on our tree and they're out and stuff like that. But I don't quite feel as nervous as I did, uh, you know, as that, as that nine-year-old girl. But like, like I said, Victoria's like, I'm never going outside again. Yeah. They you said know. that they were out in 2004 and that would have been 17 yeah. years ago. I don't remember this volume, but then again, when I was at my mother's house yesterday, she did not have as many out as well, we have so, on our tree. So, th- I mean, I think that's the thing. So you said this is Brood X, the 17 year. Maybe the 20 year is the one that I'm thinking of. 
is that a different brood or does no, that brood I, not I exist? I feel like so they call them twenty year, like a twenty year phenomenon, but I think it's just rounding up. Okay. Okay. I got so you. So this is, you know, the brood X is the largest group. Brood okay, so brood X is the largest group, which yeah. is the one that just sort of infiltrates everything. You've got to cover your trees to protect yeah. the young trees. Yeah. Um they don't really eat a lot because mm-hmm. they don't really eat. They just live for six weeks. And um, then they're gone. It's just their size. You know, if, if a bunch of them land on a tree, you know, they could, the volume of them could destroy the planet. Tree. They would. Yeah. They, they, um, if particularly for young trees, yeah. dark, very young trees or very thin trees. Yeah. Um, but otherwise they don't really destroy a lot. No, uh, but the, the, it's, it's a volume thing. There's, yeah. There's just yeah. so many of them. There's so many of Nicole them. Was a, she was like, yeah, the birds are going to eat them all. I was like, no, they're, they're, they're too many for they're, the birds. They're, they're, <laughs> benefit is their numbers like that they, yeah. they come up so much so that they can't all be eaten they're they're just fighting to survive yeah uh and they're using volume as their main weapon to uh overcome yeah all all predators no predator can truly eat them all because there are so many of there's them. so many well they you know be billions and billions of them they haven't said crazy. you know that's and, and uh, you know it's very true because we've got five nests six in total five nests in this tree in front of our house five bird nests yeah and you know i sat outside the other day and um yesterday or today actually and you could see the locusts flying around and you could see the boots birds swooping every single time they're just they're living Mm -hmm. their best life with these bugs right they're right they're getting over like a fat cat in a cheese factory um but yeah they're yeah, still fat rat in a cheese factory. Fat rat Cats in don't a, really eat cheese like that. Fat cat in a cheese yeah. fat rat in a cheese factory. Now if a <laughs> if a cat was eating the mice that would get into the cheese factory, then that would probably And then the cat chases the yeah. the dog chases the cat and the cat chases the rat. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so Um but yeah, no, like uh it, it's funny because our Raven, our younger cat, he has been going out and just randomly chasing stuff. Yeah, he's out there chasing the. He is. Cicadas. He is. He, but he mostly likes to sit in the air conditioning and have the door open and see, kind of like TV and watch the birds and stuff. But sometimes mm-hmm. he's like, "Oh no, I need to get in on this. Yeah. These birds are swooping low. I'm gonna chase the birds. Oh, and there's locusts. So he's he's living his best life. Yeah, the dogs are are definitely out there. Yeah, uh, my dog was out there. I was gonna say them. you said Chichala was saw, like every time he saw one fly past, he'd be like, "Oh no, I gotta eat that." He would just eat it and then. So a couple of me spit out, but then there so you actually saw him eat it. Like you no, know, he was actively eating the cicada, <laughs> actively eating the He's cicada. So gross! Like yeah. just eating them out of the air, just eating them out the sky. Like they would fly past his face, and he'd be like, "Oh!" And, then, <laughs> and, gop, 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 gop. and if he didn't, if it wasn't a good one to him, he'd let it fall out of his mouth. But if he got it in there good, he'd just go ahead and swallow it. And I'd be like, "You have to stop eating those. They aren't toxic." You're so they say, "Don't worry about sick, them eating dummy. them." But the fact that they don't stop eating things. So it's like well, if he yeah. just keeps eating them. He's going to eat till he pukes. Him. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, don't fill up on locusts. I mean, yeah. don't fill up on cicadas. <laughs> right. You have kibble at home. Right, right, right. Yeah. Even though he's not eating the kibble at He's home. not it's eating the kibble. Thing. Yeah. I mean, we give him, him too well. We, we feed him very well. And so he's like, I know if I wait, I don't have to eat the kibble that you're going to give me some old chicken. So, yeah. or pork line or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, and as you know. There's good and bad to that, right? Like, we're not wasting anything because he will eat it all. Fair yeah. enough. Um, the only other thing is like, well, we also bought this kibble that you're supposed to be eating. And can't nobody eat it but you. So please mm. eat the kibble. But yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I remember before, um, you know, uh, when they were here, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I kept saying that, uh, you know, there was always a situation where everywhere you looked, you saw one. It yeah. wasn't so much that it was. It wasn't the memory that you described where they might be swarming on the trees or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But like every direction you looked, usually there'd be one in your periphery. It was this weird kind of. Uh, you always saw them. Yeah. Everywhere you yeah, went. Yeah, they were just. Every, and if you yeah. were outside looking in any one direction, there would be a, a one over in the corner yep. or one flying by. Yep. Or, you know, I mean, they were always just kind of out. Uh, and then when you walked through them, you had to worry about them kind of sticking on your clothes. Yeah. Uh, or you know, getting on your back. And and again, they they're they don't see very well, so they don't really know yeah, they're that they're running. No, they they're just, just like, oh, you. I didn't see you there. <laughs> yep. They're very dumb. Uh, like I knocked one out the sky walking walking the dog. The other it's day. very easy to knock it them out of the sky. It was kind of flying, and I just was like, pow. Yeah, because any other flying object is like, oh, you're not gonna smack me. Right. But these things, they're just like uh, going that way. <laughs> right, right. Excuse me, sir. So there's a fascinating story. I 
So uh, Bridget and I were talking about the cicadas and she remembered she was in college and uh, at TSU and Mm -hmm. she said she came home and that must have been 2004. Mm -hmm. And um, she didn't know anything really about the the cicadas or whatever, but she remembers going to um, to SinFed. Right. Like she she came back home for for the summer and she's supposed to be here the whole summer. She goes to, you know, she gets back here. She goes to Synthed and she said she remembers that they were just attached to the brick wall along the side of the mm, bank. Yeah. And she's like completely grossed out. She goes in like, do you guys know that there are <laughs> <laughs> like mass cicadas just like and they're like, yeah, it's that season. They come every so many years or whatever. She said that was the summer she went back to Tennessee. I didn't realize that for that summer she was supposed to be in Cincinnati. Yeah. She immediately went back to Tennessee. She just called it. She called it. She yeah. was done. She packed her stuff up and went back to Tennessee. She found a roommate. Like that yeah. was that, that was that might it. have happened that way. Well, I didn't realize that was the story. That was, you know, like she was living with the roommates and they had found a place and mm-hmm. they had all these yeah. like odd summer jobs or whatever. She was supposed to be here apparently for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but she like, decided oh, she could not do that. Huh? She could. Well, she didn't have to. Yeah. Right. I mean, if I didn't have to, I wouldn't either. Um, I mean, especially at that age, like I'm just going to pack my car up and I'm just going to go back to where they're not. Right, right, right. But where you can do whatever you want anyway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, but you know, now it's kind of like, eh, I'm concerned about them. Um, but we've been in the house due to the pandemic, so I'm not really going out anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm worried about our animals eating them too much. Yeah, be but, fine. but yeah, other As than we that, said, they're not toxic. The, the animals no, will be fine. They'll just, you know, they'll just throw up, and it'll be inconvenient to clean up. But other yeah. than that, I remember I had my jaws moment with uh, the cicada. One had gotten in the car, and I didn't <laughs> know. And I'm driving, and this was not the same occasion, but there was an occasion where I saw a woman driving with her windows down. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, she jumps the curb and knocks over her. She hits a parking meter. Change goes everywhere. Oh, no. Uh, and so, you know, I know that when they get in the car, it can freak somebody out. It'll freak you out. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people get afraid of them getting into their hair or whatever. But in my case, I was driving, and I just heard the buzz in the back of the car. And I was like, oh, no. Oh no! One's it's in gotten here. in here. It's in and here. And I was actually heading to mom's house, so I remember thinking the whole drive, like, can we just, like, just let me get to my destination? Please don't touch me until I get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh no, oh no! Please don't fly in here. There's <laughs> not enough space in here. I don't want to roll down the windows because I don't know that me. you're gonna, right? You know, know to go Mark out. fly in. No, right, they right. they don't know to go out. That's the thing. Right, right, right. I Is ended up getting in my car. Once if I made it all the way to mom's without any incident and then was able to like get him out of my car. But I was thinking like, yeah. if you fly into my face, like, I don't know that I'm going to, while piloting this two ton vehicle, I'm, I'm going not going to make crash. good decisions. I, I'm going to stop the car. I'm going to, you know, pull over. I'm going to freak out. Yeah. 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 Um, it's kind of funny because the kids are terrified of them, yeah. which makes me considerably less afraid. There's an interesting, there is this dynamic, right? Happens. Where you're like, I got to protect them. Mm-hmm. I want, I got to mm-hmm. ensure that they know that I am here to protect them and that they don't have to be afraid. So right. Right. You right. don't have to be afraid. Right. If right? it was up to me, if I was me alone, I'd probably be like, Oh, bugs. Ah. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but like the fact that they are so terrified of them reminds yeah. me like, no, this thing is smaller than you. Yeah. And yep. you don't have to be afraid of it. There's and that matter of perspective, right? Yes, yes. And they're, they're such children about it. And so I can't be a baby about it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. I can't be a child about no, it. No, like, listen. I don't want to touch it. I tell you what, like, the whole house dynamic, like, if, if daddy is afraid of it, mm-hmm. forget about the rest of us. We all going to be terrified. Right, That's it. right, right. That's it. So That's it. I instead just, like, I'm like, nah, it's you okay. You got to bone up. You got to yeah. man up. And yeah, just, I got to man yeah. up. Victoria did not want to go on the walk. And I was like, we can go on the walk. She was like, I really don't want to go. She- <laughs> and I was like, we can go. I mean, it'll And she be loves fine. to go out. She loves to go on the walks. Yeah, like, it's her yeah. thing. And yeah, because so- she loves to see people and wave at people mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. shout at them across the street compliments. It's a whole thing for your her. Your dress is so beautiful. Hello, your dog. I love you guys. Yeah. She's very interactive. She's very interactive. She's so interactive. Raising an extrovert is not the it's easiest thing for an it's introvert. Very- Listen, I sat outside. Yesterday was Saturday. I sat outside. Mm-hmm. I'm knowing the cicadas are out there, but that they're in the tree. Like, they're far enough away from me. I'm fine. Right. I'm sitting out there, and she's standing at the door, and she's like, are you going to come in now? I'm like, I need five minutes to be <laughs> yeah. quiet. And she's like, well, I can't go out there because I'm not going out because the lo- cicadas are out there. I'm never going out until they go away. Yeah. And so I'm like, I need five 
minutes, she goes away for 30 seconds and comes back. Like, how about now? <laughs> yeah. So, like, like legit, she's not, she doesn't even want to sit out there with me, which says a lot. Right, right, right. Because you're so, her best friend. Uh, Let me tell you about my best friend. She, we're like, I mean, I love her. We're going to be best friends. You are. In that way. You already yeah. are. We, <laughs> I just didn't know it. Not going to be. <laughs> oh, we you already are. are. Presently. <laughs> Yeah, That's anytime right. she doesn't want to be on top of me outside, mm-hmm. that yeah, she's terrified. So the locusts are going to give you some peace of mind. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, going to give you a little bit of moment of a reprieve, little, a little as bit, as long just, as you're willing to sit out there. Hey, yeah, me. don't touch me. That's all I'm saying. For the most part, they don't make it as far as the porch, but we do have they that. So not. I did notice they're in the bush right outside. They are the door. I was like, oh, there's some shells in there. So that there's means some they shells were in there. there. Yeah. Um, um, and they might just hang out in that bush. You don't know. Yeah, we, I think they're yeah. in that bush because that's where all the birds kind of been swooping in, and mm-hmm. then for whatever reason Raven um, he goes out and that's the first thing he goes for like he's sitting under the bush when he goes outside now yeah so it could be so and, and I've noticed like some of the neighbor some of the yards did not have them the yards without any kind of trees did not have them but the yards with trees particularly low hanging trees yeah I was like oh, we have so, a low hanging tree as I was taking so. a walk I was like oh no like anytime you had to go up under a low hanging tree you'd kind of yeah. see yeah there's the house it. where the tree where you almost have to go out into the street because yeah, the tree is I, so I low I did a lot more walking out into the street Ooh. when I did my walk two days yeah. ago um, they're everywhere I didn't go back out today or yeah. no that was yesterday was that yesterday that was, that was yesterday, yesterday. Yep. before before I made breakfast. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, the, we're living with cicadas, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon. There's so many things that are so many people that are like fascinated by it. It's kind of yeah. been all over the media. There's this creature that comes out of the ground every 17 years. Uh, you could set your set your calendar by it. And they infiltrate the trees and the grass yep, and everything, and, and they try to get their freak on before they die. Before they die. And then uh, they disappear again for seven. And then they're years. gone. Yeah, yeah, and then that's it, right? So uh, it's interesting yeah. that you were saying that you were in your car. I remember the 2004 brood. I don't know sure what brood that was, but could have been brood X. They were 17 years ago. Okay. That's how old you are. That's how old we are. That's how old you are. I remember they make a very distinct sound, oh, right? Yeah. And I remember this must have been after we had gone to New Orleans. I had beads hanging off of my rear view mirror mm-hmm. um, from New Orleans. Yeah. And they make a similar sound. The rattling that they make. They make a, a rattling similar, yeah. sound similar. And I remember thinking that there was a locust in the car mm-hmm. and I about crashed my contour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, cicada. It's okay. That's going to be in the show notes. It's Nicole can't a, determine can't, the difference between a cicada and a locust. I She's can't calling them the same say thing. the difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that they're different. They're all gross. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, fair enough. But yeah, I remember like, like I had to pull over because I'm like, oh my God, it's a cicada. Mm-hmm. And so that, I remember that was. So here's the interesting thing. Cicadas do not swarm, but locusts do. And locusts really? do, do eat crops. Yes. What's the difference? I'm reading what's the difference now. Huh. What What is the visual difference? Like, uh, uh, so cica- locusts look more like grasshoppers. Like they're, they're oh, a oh, longer okay. creature. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So they like, they have a long tail. And then they sort of. And they got the back, the hind legs. Right, right, right. Okay. Like a grasshopper. I was going to say like a grasshopper, right? body and gotcha. legs. Like they got the spindly yeah. little legs. Well, and they, they got, got the big eyes body. and they got the fat body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I know the difference in my in my head. It's just I've always used those terms interchangeably, and mm-hmm. and cicadas are less destructive. So yeah, they um, a lot more of the damage comes from their egg laying process as opposed to their feeding. Habits, the actual according feeding. According to this website that gotcha. I just looked up. Huh. Uh, and locusts are longer and thinner, as I said. Longer, so th- look, yeah. Look more like yeah. grasshoppers. Yeah, cicadas are fatter. Their bodies are fatter. And, and locusts got the fly big, further distances. Eyes. Yeah. Got so it. yeah, got it. So I'm not I'm not actually terrified of locusts at all. I feel like they, they are they're always around, but it's the, the cicadas are they're big and they're black. They've got these wings and these big red eyes, and mm. they make all this noise. And locusts are yeah, they're, they're more like grasshoppers. Apparently, gotcha. I see, I see it in my head now that I you know now that you're it. calling me out on the fact that I can't. Yeah, get no, these, you keep getting this them wrong. Like for some reason, you, wrong. You, you put them in your head. I same. yeah I don't know when that happened I don't either but I've, it's probably always been that way mm, right mm. I mean because I was I mean seven eight or nine you know when they the cicadas first came and I'm pretty sure that you know my family we didn't 
you know, they didn't warn us or anything like that. And they probably use the terms uh, interchangeably as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know, like, I don't even think we get locusts like that. Um, no, uh, farmland, mm -hmm. mostly, right? Mid, um, middle of America, sort of, right? Not mm -hmm. so much with Midwest like us. Yeah. Closer to the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. I took the kids. So when we first saw them emerging in the tree, I took the kids out that morning. I think I think I was like working. Yeah, I remember you said that you're yeah, like the locusts are out, and they're all freaked out, but they they're interested as well. Yeah, they were fascinated. But Daniel was like freaked out. He ran in the house, and Victoria, like I said, she's kind of attached to it. It's like the biggest thing that she's afraid of right now. Rob put his shoes on. He was like, I want to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rob was pretty okay. Daniel was like terrified Ugh. I had to like hold him to get him to like look at them oh like, yeah no. I remember you had to take him out like listen they're not yeah these are just afraid. their shells yeah they're yeah. flying around right now yeah yeah there's a part of me that's like you know as far as our kids go like hey you know we need to stick them out in nature more so that they're not afraid right you right. know because I mean there's so many things that oh. I mean honestly as a kid I wasn't uh, one with nature either you know we lived in the city so we yeah. you know hey north america is currently the only can continent besides antarctica without a native locust species so no, we don't even have locusts seriously seriously huh interesting, interesting. huh interesting. yeah interesting like check out the brain on richie vaughn yeah, yeah yeah well you know this is the type of science <laughs> fact that would keep me up at night right this is the stuff you think about mm -hmm. and i'll just google go down the google rabbit hole <laughs> lord have mercy and just be at it for a while yeah like. yeah 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 no nah, i think the interesting thing about all of this is like we can't be afraid of them right yeah no we, because we don't want our kids to be afraid right. of them right i think that's the, like one of the other things that you forget that kids add to your life mm -hmm. uh they very frequently sort of push you to be a different person than you would be put your big girl draws on right just, because yeah. you got to for them because they're experiencing life for the first time and, and mm -hmm. if they don't learn how to manage anxiety and fear then you're and gonna doubt. instill that fear into them yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely and so yeah. they have to learn to overcome those things yeah and very often I, th I see that as kind of my role as their father to mm -hmm. be this guy who helps them understand that you can have emotions but you do need to keep pushing yourself you keep pushing them. yourself and you'll you'll surprise yourself mm -hmm. if you if, if given the op opportunity right yeah. yeah yeah and so i see that a lot like you know i, I a lot of people we're more free range than a lot of pe parents are these we days are. It's sort of, hey, just try and be yourself, figure yourself out and give mm -hmm. you the time and space to do that. Mm -hmm. But also there's a benefit to challenging them and to pushing them into spaces where they are uncomfortable. Listen, we're not going to be outside and you crying about these flies. We're right. not going to do that. Right. We're not right. going to do that. you got to go out and do a thing. We're going to go out and do a thing. And I think a lot of that is just experiential, right? Where we're constantly sort of saying, hey, this yeah. is where this is what you're doing. And right. we're here with you to walk you through it, you right. know. Well, you know, you have support. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, well, and, and unlike the locust <laughs> or or the cicada, we don't just die off and leave you to fend for yourself. We now we'll be here and we'll yeah. show you how we deal with it, and we'll show you how mm -hmm. you can deal with it. Right, right, right. To hopefully be a, a more a better emotional creature. Yeah, uh, as yeah. a result, we yeah, can navigate the challenges of the world uh, in spite yeah. of uh, the fact that it is inescapable. There will be challenges. I there will think. be challenges, and there will be things that you know that they'll they'll have trouble getting through but we'll be there for them right i will say as a mom m m um one of the biggest challenges i faced as far as like okay like i'm terrified of birds for many mm -hmm. reasons um birds attack okay let's be clear about that right they don't attack they, they absolutely do i have two people in the whole entire world that also agree with me um, okay. Because they've also been attacked by birds. Okay. But we went to Clearwater and uh, there is um, Pier 60 has um, vendors of all kinds, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a vendor there that had um, pigeons. Ugh, like they were like his friends, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he like they're hanging out with them and he's like, you know, showing them off and you can pet them and feed them and all this other kind of stuff. And... I, 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 I'm terrified of birds, uh, pigeons even more so. Okay, I don't like any of the birds. Don't care. Um, uh -huh. But there's a picture. Like I'm pregnant with Victoria. We've got Daniel and we've got Ra. So Victoria's in my stomach. So uh, four and two. 
and I go over and one of the kids wanted to see the birds and I'm like oh my god I can't show them that I'm terrified of these dumb birds okay 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 we're gonna go over and the guy was also developing no i don't i do not want them my fear my fear became uh came from a very specific event for me but but so yeah we get over to the birds and they like looking at them and they're petting them and they're nice birds Mm -hmm. Uh, they're still birds but yeah but so there's you know that moment where you're like okay i gotta put my big girl underwear on and i gotta like not be scared so they are not scared You know, I mean, I I wasn't scared of birds before my incident, which was this random. I had a a fireplace Mm -hmm. and in an apartment and um, somehow the flu was not fixed correctly. And so birds would randomly show up in my apartment. And it was terrifying because there's something about uh, seeing something like a bird that's supposed to be outside in the air and the open than mm-hmm. seeing them flapping around in, in your, your home, in your space, in your very little personal space yeah. with nowhere to go. And it is very, uh, it was terrifying for me. And so ever since then, mm-hmm. it was always been a, a thing, but yes. I conquered my fear. I'm on the beach. I'm like, you got to calm down. You're on the beach. Mm-hmm. Like it's, these babies are looking at you to be brave, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that, uh, I, you know, the bird thing was harder. I, I don't think the cicada thing will be as hard for me, strangely enough, because I remember being terrified as a kid. But yeah, I, I remember the bird incident. I'm not nearly as afraid of birds as you were, mm-hmm. uh, even though I was there for some of those. You were there for that second incident. Yeah. They yeah. got into my house like three different times. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. It was Fix the flu. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Help yeah. me, Lord. Yeah. 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 <sighs> so, yeah, that was that was the bird incident. Now, now the cicada. <laughs> Now uh, cicadas. Another thing to fear, but we're like we said, we're trying to help them to get over yeah. those fears. And, and, the, and the cicadas are so much smaller. It's just like you know, as long as they don't touch me, we don't we don't have a problem. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I, I if I would have been if it wasn't for the kids, I probably would have been more afraid of them. But like I said, I was walking and I was just batting them away. Like get out of here. That's Graham. Graham. Scram, scram. Yeah. 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 Stupid. I got other well away. because your priorities change, right? It's like I got other stuff to do. Yeah. In that way that as we talked about before, sometimes having a family, being in a family makes you have to recognize sort of the larger picture Mm -hmm. in a way you Uh, don't have a choice this is like yeah there are people that depend on me this is tier 10 man i'm I'm up at tier two and three like one like i don't i can't yeah let this the dog needs to be walked and we're already out here i need to walk you need to walk get your steps in Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so yeah turn into a potato (laughs) yeah so yeah um so yeah so that's um that's a, probably a good place to p- pause before our commercials. Yes, so it's a good place to pause before our commercial. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a break here, uh, so you can hear some uh, sponsorship, and uh, we'll be right back with the Hall Space Podcast. See you soon. Snap, snap, be cicada pizza. We make our pizza with our authentic crunchy breed. Ooh, snap, be cicada pizza. We hand strip the wings. Stitching the parts we don't need. Ooh, snappy cicada pizza. We choose the freshest cicadas in town. When we run out, we pull more from the ground. Snap, snap, snappy cicada pizza. Tree delivery. So let me tell you about Anchor Podcast. It's the podcasting service that I use. Anchor.fm is the easiest way to make a podcast, and there are many different reasons why, but foremost is it's free. So you don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, If you have a phone uh, or a computer and a microphone, you can record and edit your podcast right on your phone or computer. So that's one major benefit, uh, as well as the fact that they'll distribute your podcast to several different podcasting sites for you. Not only can your podcast be found on Anchor, it can also be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, and Google Podcast as well. So you don't have to worry about going to all those different sites and setting yourself up. They'll do it for you. You can also make some money on your podcast. Say you have a podcast that only five people listen to on a regular basis. They don't limit you on how many subscribers you have to have in order to be able to make a little bit of change uh, for your podcast to keep yourself going. So pretty much everything you need uh, to start a podcast can be found at Anchor. 
Anchor.fm. So go download the app uh, either in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store or go to Anchor.fm to get started. And I guarantee you it'll make things so much easier for you like it has for me. Love, relationships, the church, the world as we see it today, and many more thought-provoking conversations. This season of Speak Kaya, She's Come Undone Talk Sessions. Come into your ears soon. Keep watching. Wouldn't you know those brown eyes see a side that be nobody knows? Nobody knows but you. I wanna go. Go wherever your thoughts lead you, treasures you hold. Why don't you show the truth? Cause what I've seen so far is heaven sent. Eloquent and decadent, every drop is in my way. I hold on, babe. I live this whole damn life all over again. Just to meet you once again Every second minute Now it's still in place Cause you've always been Welcome back to the Hall Space Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Rich Hall, uh, here with my lovely and capable wife. Nicole Hall, thanks for joining us for the second half here. Yes, and we're leaving the cicadas behind for a little bit. I'm going to talk about something Nicole saw on the internet. Yeah, because there's always things on the internet. There's always right? interesting things on the internet to discuss. Always, 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 always. Uh, and so, I mean, and this is something that's emerged before, um, right? Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, as of late, Larry Reed Live, which is, you know, if you don't follow him on YouTube, 
Uh, he's got very uh, entertaining um, shows, basically, um, and it's uh, mostly uh, church related, religion related, um, things like that. Just sort of the inner the the entertaining things about that world. Um, and one of the things that he posted recently was um, women proposing to men, and he really just kind of posed posed it as a question, you know there was a, a video of this girl she got down on her knee she opened up the box and proposed to her boyfriend and uh he didn't state one way or another how he felt about it but what he said was how do you guys feel about this is this a yay or this is a nay and and like i said this is something that i feel like i've seen before in social media it comes up every now it and comes again. up every so, every so often yeah yeah because there's some girl that goes out of their way to propose to the guy mm-hmm. and then it becomes like this viral sort of yeah, thing yeah, yeah. because you know? it's so anomalous because it's it not is. usual it is it, it is. is a thing to be discussed it is a thing to be sc- discussed mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um i personally i uh i'm old school uh-huh. I'm old school. Yeah. I was raised old school. Uh-huh. You propose to me. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. All right, because then that says you're the one that's ready, all right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that you've come to the point as a man uh-huh. where you are ready to take care of me. Yeah. The household. Yeah. And if we have children, those children. Yes. Right? Uh-huh. Like so for me that that's that's important the way it's supposed to be the way it's supposed to be yes. important i mean and also just because you know we are we're christian right mm-hmm. you're the head of the household right so you need to be like yes i'm ready I'm and prepared, ready and prepared to, to step into house. that position absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah which is why i would never propose to you uh-huh uh-huh um i think was that Halle berry that proposed to one of her husbands i think did she i feel like that was what happened i'll Holy have to look into cow. that but i feel like that was a thing that's so crazy because Halle Berry is beautiful. Yeah. She don't have to propose to nobody. I'm pretty sure that she could be like, I'm dropping this hint, yo. I'm Halle Berry. Boom. But I mean, it's kind of like. Yeah, she proposed to David Justice. No, Eddie Justice. I'm like, wait a minute. David, David Justice, Justice is Eddie Jennifer Justice, Lopez's ex. She's married wow. from 1993 to 1996 to Eddie oh, Justice. So yeah, three years out of that. Six huh? months into their relationship, she no. proposed. They married on New Year's Day shortly after midnight in 1993. How would you have felt? Right. Because, okay, so. How just, would I have felt if Halle Berry proposed to me? Because I'm jackpot, not talking about. Jackpot, we're not talking about. Cha-ching. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, gotcha, I will. Oprah. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe this is happening. It's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. You're a horrible person. What? That's not. That was not my question. That was not your question? <laughs> that, that was the question I was ready to answer. <laughs> In what dream world is Halle Berry, Halle Berry proposing to moi? Let's just go with it, right? Let's just go with it. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's figure out where this goes. I'm for it. <laughs> no. She's been married and divorced three times, so there's a good chance. <laughs> there's, a, there's a possibility, right? Yeah. I mean, Liz Taylor had eight marriages. Yeah, I'll I be mean, number you six. Know, you be whatever number, number right? Number seven? I mean, but by the time you get to We'd six have a good six, run. Listen, by six or seven, she's like 65, and she's done with menopause. That's I mean, Halle Berry that. just got abs at 50-something. Oh, well, I'm... Um, just got. She's oh, been Duche. working out a lot. Oh, Duche, my brother. Oh, Duche. She's been working out a lot. She, she does... <laughs> her job yeah <laughs> she's 54 years no, old she just got abs for the first time she's never had abs before she's got abs now but she's always been thin so 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 yeah, what yeah, yeah. so what I pre- honestly that, i prefer girl, I show prefer, me a fat girl that got abs now okay show me a girl some of them. i mean big girls there's some big girls okay. with uh definition they're, 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 show they're me a girl that used to be big not a girl that's always been thin it's mm-hmm. harder for girls who have been Large for uh-huh. a long time, and for them to be able to get to that point, it's a huge accomplishment. It is, it is. Holly Berry it's, it's ain't never been more than a you, two, okay? It's way easier if you have, you know, a bunch of people you can afford. Oh, yeah, to pay you got a team. To make your meals and to well, work yeah. out with you. They're cooking your food, they're yeah. working out for Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, showing Absolutely. up at your house, making you work now, out. Yeah. The, I will say, you know, there. She probably does have chefs. She probably does have yeah. a personal oh trainer. Gosh, she's got, all that, totally. I mean, all, that stuff. all that. She's plugged in. But I mean, it, it, here's the thing 
it's part of her job so that when she takes on certain roles, they she can probably pay write for that a stuff yeah, it's, in the, it's in the absolutely. writer. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, uh, they I just can... talked about that for like the Marvel. If you work for Marvel, there are people on staff whose job it is to make sure to you look like you. a superhero. Yeah. Awesome. That's so awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's part of the, yeah, it's part of the gig, right? Because you, you got to look a certain way. So you do, you, know, you do, you, you do the, for a role. It's, yeah. It's part of the thing. Um, and I'll be, I'll be honest. My my favorite Halle Berry is Girl Next Door Halle Berry era Boomerang. Boomer, I was going to say Boomerang, boomerang with the Halle mushroom haircut. Yeah, yeah, all for it. All that's for a it. lot of people's in our demographic. That's their oh, yeah, because that's when we met her. And you, we were like, yeah. OK, yeah. I, I like I like Girl Next Door. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't. I You know, I understood when she became the sex symbol. So Bond yeah. Girl Halle Berry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, very, but Girl Next Door Halle Berry was like she wasn't thin. She wasn't fat. She was just right. She was pretty, but she wasn't like. Uh, she like wasn't now she's sculpted. considered like this yeah she's because of this sort of supernatural beauty but back mm-hmm. then she was just a pretty light skinned girl yeah, uh, yeah you know yeah. like so many girls uh, are on the block so uh, it wasn't as considered as weird yeah well I mean and that's the thing yeah. like about the boomerang Hallie right it's like you feel mm-hmm. like maybe you went to high school with that girl maybe yeah you definitely did there weren't a ton of them but there's at least there one was, or two there was one or, girl, yeah. yeah one artsy yeah. light skinned girl at yep. your high school that you knew I mean uh, fair enough could have been Hallie Berry fair enough fair enough so yeah um, I would not turn down Halle Berry's marriage we, proposal so I'd be dumb I'd be it, it, come, come on sh- uh, I, I'd be dumb I, I hear you, but she didn't propose to you. Okay. I, but my, I'm just my saying. My question was. Your question was. My question was. Would I have accepted a proposal? Yeah. From, from a woman. From a woman. Right. Well, let me, I also, let, once again, we, let's back up here. I was also raised traditionally, right? So I came from right. a two-parent household where there were, in a Christian home, where there were a lot of rules around how mm-hmm. this is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. The rules are weird if we think about them. But they are. But they are what they are. They though, are what right? they are. Um and we do we do sort of we do sort of fall back on them when trying to deal with the ambiguity of life. So um, I would not probably have been comfortable. I remember when you and I were talking about it earlier in our lives and this idea of trying to be married while I myself was entering in graduate, graduate school, school in graduate yeah. school, not making any money. Yeah. Like, you know, I was in I was making, you know, 10, 14,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. At that point. Uh with one job and had a couple of extra jobs on top of that so that yeah, I could supplement yeah. and a the ton income. of student loan debt yeah. bills, uh, bills so are it was actually forever. terrifying to me the yeah. idea of getting married uh, at that time because I knew I couldn't sort of fulfill the role now so much of that has shifted where particularly black women being the most educated demographic uh, or the rising ed- most educated demographic uh, in America more. yeah um, it, it, it is it is weirder now um, but you know I do think that uh, you know, if you want to be married, you have to be marriage minded. If you want that for yourself, um, I think it's very easy to get caught up in the single life that is, I just get to do for me and I don't have to make the daily compromise right. that is a relationship because right, right. a relationship is full of all these, I well, can't just do are. what I want to do today. I, mean, I got to do what other people want right. to do. And all that's the, time. the thing. Like, if you're not ready for that type of commitment, yeah. that is something to absolutely keep in mind because you're sharing spaces. There's got to be compromise. There's mm-hmm. got to be a number of things that occur to make that relationship successful. Yes. Right. And it really has to be like, you really have to be partnership minded. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty much like at all times. Like there's, yeah. there, there's, there's rarely ever a moment in this where I can't have my you singleness can't do something uni- disturbed. unilaterally. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, uh, the, a kid needs something. The wife yep. needs something, you yep. know, like somebody is going to need something and you yep. can't just be like, well, I mean, you could be, you're going to feel it. I just want to sit in this chair right now and not go do the thing. But, you know, not doing that is creating other problems. So I need to go do the thing. I mean, and, and, and like a good example of that, like something that is mundane for maybe a lot of people is like dinner, right? It's like, okay, you could go out and get yourself a Chick-fil-A sandwich, but there's five other people in this house that need to eat, that also need to eat. And as a parent, as a husband, you make sure that everybody else has what they need in order to yeah, eat, you gotta right? Yeah, feed them kids. Yeah, you got to feed the kids. You got to feed mama. You got to feed me. Like, there's all, all of these considerations that you yeah. have to make when you're in a relationship. And, and when you're single, the, you can eat whatever you want when you want. Listen, alone. that's totally what I did when I was alone. And that's totally what you did, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You had your own apartment. You you ate what you ate when you ate it. And you mm-hmm. didn't have to consult with anybody to do that. Yeah. You know? Um and so, I mean, I, I will t- to take it back. I do agree uh, to some degree. I think, like I said, like I said, I think 
so many things are changing as far as the traditions because I do know I mean having watched a ton of random manosphere crap Mm -hmm. you know marriage rates have gone down considerably Mm -hmm. Uh, and as a result um, you know black women are more educated they're doing better in society Mm -hmm. as far as jobs and whatnot Mm -hmm. but they are not pursuing relationships they are enjoying singleness they are traveling they're doing all those things, kind of chasing a particular type of lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know, uh, hot girl summers and whatnot. But they are not settling down at the same rates. And men aren't, uh, you know, so there's a lot either. of discussions yeah. about are, are men and women marriageable right now? Yeah. Um, and I don't know that that's, you know, I'm, I'm working on a theory a right now. Wicket. That social media is creating a false reality. And because we're such social creatures who Agree. who work via modeling, what we discuss in those circles and social media isn't actually reality, Agree. but it's shaping and warping reality to such a degree that young people coming up are unable to really even learn how to connect in real reality. Mm-hmm. They are using the altered reality that is social media to shape how they see the real world sort of connection. And so, so many of them, because of all these media discussions, it's Mm -hmm. like, it's it's essentially like kids being involved in too many adult conversations. So now they're afraid of marriage because they've seen so many marriages dissolve and, and break up. And here's the thing, the ones that do that, that isn't to say that there aren't a lot that do, but Mm -hmm. as a person who works in certain circles, like upper middle, upper class white people's marriages, they're fine. Mm -hmm. They're not as bad as it looks on paper or in the media. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. But that's I speak to a lot of young though, people. Right? Like, There's a lot of marriages that are more fine than is not. presented in media. Yeah. But people become so shy about the idea yeah. of marriage. And I, I think there's a lot of messaging around pursuing uh, careers. Women are, women are told to pursue careers. And I think some of that comes from women not being able to have choice for so long. Right. And uh, so now in, in they're careers, exerting now they're like, choice. Now yeah. they're asserting that choice and they're prioritizing. Yeah. But what that means is they're going into the workforce in some ways as men what used to in the past and so men could if you think about the traditional pathway men would attach themselves to a woman and then the man would go off into the world and make the money and the man would form the relationship with society that says I'm going to provide you labor and you provide me money to take back to the family when women go do that they are doing that in a way that now they cannot attach themselves to a man in the same way that says I, you know, before the contract was, I provide for the woman provides for you in the house right. and the man provides the money that keeps the machine going. So they both contribute on two different sides yeah. to the unit and that they both have a responsibility to raise the kids. But the primary responsibility is the female's responsibility. When the woman now goes out into the world and makes this contract with society that says, I will be providing income. Mm-hmm. She's now giving up some land on her ability to raise her kids the same way. Yeah, there's this blurred lines, right? Yeah, because and I have a full-time job like you do. Right, and so now the we house have to share the responsibility. To, yeah, yeah. One of the things they don't talk about a lot is that in African-American households, we are more egalitarian. We tend to be more likely to share. Black husbands mm-hmm. tend to be more willing, whereas white husbands, this is historical, this is based on some research, I'm not just throwing pulling this out of nowhere, white husbands tend to be, the woman has to do the job. Yeah. Uh, and they tend to and be okay with job. that. Yeah, both jobs. They so have to do, if you also want to have a job, you, have a full-time you still have job, to be fully are, responsible yeah, for yeah. child rearing and the family unit. Do you also find, though, with the with the white households, with the ho- households that are headed by white men, do you also find that they're willing to um, be the breadwinner and not have the wife work? There's a lot more of that. You know, but right. there's also a lot of issues around earning potential. So I'm definitely talking about upper class white right, households. Right, right. Now because it's the same I, in lower class white households as well. Like the man tends to be the breadwinner slash, right, you know, right. and they can be the, home they and be two working kids homes. And cook and, yeah, yeah. But, but but there's still the burden tends to be a more traditional role. And what's interesting is you tend to find in some studies that people who have more traditional female male gender roles tend to report more happiness. And you have to wonder how much of that is wrapped up in. They're they're living up to the ideal, even if there yeah. are elements of it that make them unhappy. Yeah, they're still like, but I'm still doing, I'm still fulfilling my role. And yeah. so there's a lot of questions that come up about if, as a society, we keep blurring some of the roles. Are yeah. we really going to be happier? You know, for the woman who spends well into her 40s and 50s, not being married, traveling all the time, able to pursue her own interests. Be hard for them as she to... gets older, is she still happy with the choices? She's got a lot of good memories, right. but she hasn't necessarily established a family. We know for a fact that uh, young men who do not attach to families 
unless they find another social contract so they you know they lock themselves into this long lasting career that's mm-hmm. going to keep fulfilling them they're going to be like they're terrible to society like they're the they're the guys who end up in jail the guys who end up just not going in the right directions like we kind of need purpose in a way yeah. as creatures and so if we don't have it it gets weird particularly yeah. for males because males kind of need the I've talked about this before. Males kind of need the stabilizing thing that is a family yeah. that says, I can't be all ego. Now I can take some risks and I need to go out there and do some things, but However, I cannot be all independent. I need to temper some of that. Mm-hmm, and, make mm-hmm. sure and for that black I'm males, not. it just, there just isn't enough in society to support us having those sort uh, there, there's essentially there's, there is a portion of society that is totally willing to let us dangle out there, make the right mistake and then throw us in a box and then charge yeah. us for being in that box. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. and the box is jail. Yeah. For those of you who didn't get the metaphor I was walking towards <laughs> yeah. slowly. Yeah, no, but, I, I got it. Totally um, got it. But yeah. the, you know, but, and so, you know, it, it goes back to some of why I do appreciate religion, even though I'm religious, but questioning like religion is a stabilizing force for a lot of people. There are some, some people it does not work for. There's definitely a lot of work the black church needs to do to uh, revamp its image in 2021 uh but it it does teach values in a way that promotes the family that promotes this unit as a as a valuable uh purveyor of culture and a thing that helps to mold people and keep them together it gives you a thing larger than yourself yeah that helps you sort of recognize why you can't get so caught up in the ego there's something bigger than you your family is more important your kids are more important yeah and it doesn't mean that your idea your identity has to be completely centralized around these concepts of family and but it also does mean that it's valuable yeah. to develop the legacy that you want for yourself it can't just be about you it's no longer my it's story it's no longer about you yeah the I story mean, of rich hall is no longer my story it's also rich hall the third yeah i gotta be thoughtful about what i do to contribute to right. that dude becoming a man yep. not just i gotta do what i gotta do for me nope i right. gotta be thinking you how, think about what him. kind of man am i creating in yeah. rich and daniel yeah absolutely uh and that, that's a valuable part of how i once again going back to the fear thing when we talked about the cicadas I got to be thoughtful about how I present because that's the that's the identity of man yeah. that they get. Yeah. Yeah. So well and, and that's I, a lot. I think it is a lot, but I think also when you say you know you're talking about family um connections, I I really um wanted to point out that you're not necessarily talking about people that have to have kids but relationships marriages in general right relationships and marriages in general are valuable i'm not saying yeah, i'll yeah. never be the person that says everyone has to get married i'll never be the person that says everyone everybody needs has to have, to have kids because everybody's not built for that for but the, i know that society as a whole needs families yeah because it's, well, a, it's for, a good reproductive strategy i was gonna say to there's a families. utilitarian a, a point of view for that right yeah. like we would cease to exist yes without making children and without right? Yeah. Um, I always I always think in terms of I had a cat uh, and uh, the cat had babies and the first generation Is it Melvin. Um, I can't remember which cat, but I, I don't know when I noticed this. Uh, but this is a this is a young rich at like sixth grade or seventh grade noticed mm-hmm. that something happened with one of the cats, one of the generations of cats where she was really the mom was really good at tr- teaching them to I, I said this might might have been Mr. Ugly. She was really good mm-hmm. at teaching them to uh, use the litter box. Right. But as she got older and crankier, she stopped doing that. Mr. Ugly, yeah. And so you what you find is these kind of meaner and meaner cats that didn't yeah. have home training, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't built for And that's the a home. big deal. And so I remember as a young person who, you know, was well read in the Bible and, and, and studious and observant, was like, Oh, you could intergenerationally create a whole a, new a whole new trajectory for the whole because the person wasn't at the top doing what they were supposed to do to teach the generation below them who and what to be the right way and i do think in some ways that as black society as society in general i don't i notice this across the board but definitely in black society we didn't transfer our values because we wanted a piece of the white man's world we wanted the stability that came with good jobs we had to give up some ground in agrarian societies, you lived with your parents, you worked with your parents in the fields, you, you know, you were with your dad all day doing work. Yeah. Uh, but once the dad goes outside the home and he's doing work out there in the world, you're now being raised by other entities. 
So the school has taught my children some values that yeah. I agree with. I don't always agree with, but I agree with some of them. Yeah. But they've I've now given them the responsibility. Is that Western teaching, culture, though? That is Western culture, very right? much so. So if you think about... But also not, because Eastern culture does a similar thing, but Eastern culture takes the community aspect of it more seriously well, I was because they say, understand the value. If you think about, like, India, if you think about yeah. China and mm-hmm. Japan, like... The idea that you... They centralize the family. They do centralize the family. They live together, Mm -hmm. right? So in any given household... Exactly. In any given household, having your... Living with your parents and your grandparents Mm -hmm. wasn't abnormal. No. It was actually abnormal if they didn't live with you, right? And so Because why would you reject the... Yeah. Yeah, I I worked... Why would you want to be so independent? Right. It's weird to them. Because they, they, they... There is a value to what you can learn from your elders, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of, um, I'm in IT and a lot of the um, people that I have worked with that are from India, one of the biggest things that they do, especially when their kids are young, is um, they will send their kids to Mm -hmm. back to India. To be raised for like by the, the family. To be raised by the grandparents. Yeah, for years. For like years mm-hmm. or at least for the summer, you know. Mm-hmm. So one of my coworkers, him and his wife had um, a daughter and they sent her to back to India for like three months, mm-hmm. you know, so that his mother and father could raise them. Right. Yeah. And, and that's fascinating to me because it's like, wait, isn't that our job? Clearly, the grandparents are going to be yeah. probably better at it. Well, yeah, well, dedicated to it in a different way. Well, and dedicated in a different way because as a grandparent, you n- realize, hopefully, the mistakes that you've made, right? So you're better at it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you have so much more patience than you probably would as a first-time parent, right? Yeah. I couldn't imagine leaving our kids for that long, but mm-hmm. it is... It, it is something that is completely. It definitely wasn't an easy situation. No, 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 no. I mean, and, and and you know, it's one of those things where I remember my coworker saying like he skyped every day with it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. That kind of and, thing. and I've, I've, but and I've worked with Indian families or families from uh, like Pakistan and, mm-hmm. and things like that, where because they're so communal mm-hmm. in their attitude, it's very hard for them to come over to America and to mm-hmm. be separated from these groups and so they yeah. they work really hard here to develop communities yep um they're often very distra- distressed to be separated yeah. particularly women yeah uh, particularly women yeah uh you know uh with children it's often a very challenging a sort of deal. situation for them yeah uh and so to bring it back around it's this idea that um in our communities we don't have that same connection the the, the in some ways i think the independence of american society I will definitely say it's antithetical to who we are as black people. In a lot of ways, we are a very communal people uh, Mm -hmm. who often do also have intergenerational families that are connected very strongly uh, Mm -hmm. in it's often in more ways than white people uh, tend to be uh, and that we tend to value the community in a different way. And in that regard, I think it is better when we have families that are still well connected. Uh, On my panel yesterday, the woman uh, mentioned uh, Big Mama being a vital part of I remember uh, the family that part. unit. And I, yeah. uh, I I was like, yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Uh, yeah. Big mamas are, you know, there's always a community advice. big they mama. They take care of their, yeah, yeah, there's always this community sort and, of. And, and, I, and I wanted to also bring it back to, like, you know, I, I believe that blackness has certain resiliencies. Like, we haven't survived this long in this country absolutely. without these resiliencies. And, and the family and the community unit is one of those resiliencies that allows us to the continue to thrive. The village is what keeps mm-hmm. us We are together. people who need the village. Well, and I, and, and like I, like you said, I understand that society doesn't necessarily, pr- you know, promote that in a way. But I feel like no. a lot of us have especially once you get married and you start having kids and yeah. all that kind of stuff you create this village hopefully you try ideally. to hold to yeah. that if that village right like we have a village mm-hmm. okay, i mean what's that, interesting is society will often tell you well you could just make for your friend your village but you can't always ask that of friends because they have their no, own particularly no. american society they got their own about well, their own family their listen, own stuff however you create your village is how you create yeah. your village right like for us it's like your family and my family and then the church family like we're all sort yeah. of like together 
mm-hmm. in this, in this. Having this. shared experiences. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so I and think. And there's a value to that. Like for me, I've said this that. before, it's very valuable to me to have other people around my children who share my values yep. and who, I, so that I'm not the only person they yep. hear saying, yep. be like this, be like that, make yep. these types of choices because what often happens, no matter what, ultimately, this is one of the biggest frustrations for parents. Your teen goes off into the world yep. and the world is giving them different messages and suddenly they invalidate who, what your messages are. Yeah. In yeah. a good situation, you they have a whole village around them that says, this no, is no, the way to behave. What, yeah, like, don't exactly, steal. Exactly. Don't do this because they're going to, we are influenced creatures. Yeah. We are social yeah. creatures. So if we are around people who are diluting your parents' values, you're going to yourself start to believe, well, yeah. maybe it's okay if I smoke a bunch of weed all the time yeah. because other people are doing it. Maybe it's okay if I get all yeah. the tattoos on my face. Other people are doing it, right? Yeah. But if you if you surround your children with uh, people with similar values, then they, they essentially become inoculated to those yeah. influences, which yeah. I, I do believe is valuable. That isn't to say that people can't practice all sorts of things and in an ideal world, right? If we were all living on the internet, then yeah, you could be whatever type of creature you wanted in the world yeah. without any consequence. But we live in meat space with other humans who do judge and who do have opinions and who might oppress you for a variety of choices. So mm-hmm. we have to be thoughtful about that. That's an interesting and fine line to walk. I'm still not 100% sure how I walk it well, particularly as a parent. It's a thing I think about yeah. literally all the time. Yeah. But to bring it back to what you were talking about originally, this idea of women proposing to men, I, it's a fad. It, 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 I, I do think it's an interesting thing born out of the fact that women now have more financial security uh, yeah. because having the jobs and things, uh, because they're better educated. They're making the so decisions. Th- they're man. making decisions. Yep. But uh, because, you know, once again, in an ideal world, it could work and it could happen more often. In a current world that is basically like a system built on top of the system, like for the last 20 years, women have made amazing advancements in careers. Mm-hmm. So you're building that on top of an old traditional system. And so well, those are going to be incompatible code. Yeah. That's going to, you know, some people are going to enter into it and they'll be perfectly fine. It probably isn't right for the masses yet because all people haven't gone gone through the transformation that would need to happen for that to work right. for everybody. Right. So it probably wouldn't work for most people. I, I don't know There's that it would work for me. a big transition for a lot of folks for that to even work. Yeah. 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 But as a society, and that, that, I think that's one of the interesting things when to talk about sort of the, the marriage rates and things that I was talking about before is that we've made a lot of transformations in the last 20 years. Yeah. That's having an effect. Well, we have yet to see how that will turn out. We were, we're definitely all worried about the boomers aging because there are yeah. so many of them. They yep. were a, a much bigger generation. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're living longer. What's going to happen when our generation lives longer? And there's so many of them unmarried, untethered yeah. in many ways outside of friend what circles. What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to look different. It's going to look weird. I'm, yeah. I'm very curious. I'm fascinated to see what it looks like. Uh, because are, are, are we all just going to be the, like the first generation that's getting married in their 60s for the very first time? Like, what's going to uh-huh. be? I mean, and forming those unions late because what, why, what am I chasing now? I mean, well, honestly, I mean, and the, this is the, the biggest thing that I, you know, you hear it all the time and I used to be offended by it as a younger person, but it, the, the truth is as a woman, you have a certain number of years where if you want to have children, you, you gotta have be thinking to about be that. thinking about mm-hmm. it. You have to geriatric be ready presidents, for it. Pregnancy. There is absolutely all my pregnancies were geriatric because right? you were over the age of thirty five. Because I was over the age of thirty five, and right. we were doing it right. We was right, which and, is a whole and, other conversation. Like yeah, we waited and, forever yeah, to get married. Y'all missed it. Like you can't see it, but it's like air quotes. It's like we started dating when we were nineteen, twenty years old. Yeah, we I was were twenty. In, you were nineteen. Uh, we were engaged for a very long time. We didn't get married until we're like 29, 30. Yeah. We had our first baby. And that was in part because I believe some of these ideas around, I needed to be finished. Yeah. Because that was the messaging. So our parents finished and our, the generation what, before us, they got married with where they were. Like, yeah. it was, there was no message around. No, and around. they worked through it together. No. They, worked through, they, they built Your themselves up together. Your parents were like 20. Yeah, they were both. My mom and dad were like 20 years old. Yeah. And People were getting married together. at 17, 18, 19. Yeah. And then they kept thinking there had to be a better way than this. Yeah. And so they promoted to us, go to college, get done with college, then Do think about first, getting married. And then think about getting yeah. married. Yeah. And so I did that. But then in doing that, you know, held you in a stasis for like nine years because mm-hmm. I was trying to finish that, got into graduate school and was like, oh, maybe not now. Maybe I should be a little bit more arrived so that I can make some of these choices. And I think for, for those listening, that is the biggest part of it. Like when you're talking about when you're ready to be married, when a man yeah. is ready to propose, whatever mm-hmm. you have. I, I know for you, you specifically felt like you need to be in a place 
where you could take care of me. Yeah. And then if we had children, be able to also take care of them, which meant that you need yeah. to finish school. You yeah. have to have a good job. Now, all we that did not stuff. do that. And that created some real log jams in the system because there were I remember when jams. Victoria was uh, born. You got your PhD and Victoria was three months old. Yeah. 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 And, but no, I was going to say that I remember like NICU, Victoria baby, was so. born in the NICU. Yep. You were not going to be working and I did not make enough to pay the rent. And I was like, how, how am are I going to do, do this? this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and those I remember are real. like, and, 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 you know, I did not have any benefactors. I could not go to my parents and say, I need $800 for us to stay in this place. Yeah. I had to find that money somehow. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't even, I don't even remember how I did it. Well, <laughs> and I mean, and, 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 and honestly, the interesting thing was you were like, I'm almost done with grad school, but I, my job is my job, whatever that is. Uh huh. You know, you asked for help from our village and they yeah. stepped in in the ways that they could. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't money. always financial. It no, but it money. was just sort of like, there was hey, a lot of support. we'll pick you up. We'll drop you off. We'll take you money. Yeah, they, you exactly. know, they watch the kids so that I can go off and yep. work some odd jobs. Yep. yep. Uh, it was it was skin of the teeth stuff. And that, you know, in hindsight, I, you know, I, I often think, you know, uh, we, we've talked about this before. Like, I have a lot of peers who are having kids who are graduating from high school yep. now, graduating from college. And I'm like, oh, if we had just gotten married and gotten some of this out the way, we would have gone through some of the same struggles. We would have yeah. just done it earlier yeah. and now be done. Yeah. But we're sitting around thinking about kindergarten <laughs> because we did it the right way. And it's like we maybe did. there was not a right way. There is no right way, but what I will say is there's a traditional way, but maybe there it is wasn't a traditional. Right. But but I, what I will say is I value the time that we had as a couple prior to having kids, right? Mm -hmm. Where we could just we're in our twenties, our mid twenties, y'all. We used to get in the car and say we're going to take a trip, and we would stop off at a, a, a traffic stop, right, and get those coupons for hotels. Yeah, and then use those. And then to, use those to get this into. before GPS days, so we would absolutely. like use those to figure out what's a good we hotel a that has map, a good rate. And we said we're gonna fly south. We're gonna drive south. Uh huh. And whatever good whatever. hotel coupon the, we could get. Right. And if we arrived at the hotel and it was janky, we would just be like, let's see what other coupons. Let's we just see pull. what other coupons we can get, <laughs> and then move and keep yeah. it moving. Right? right. 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 Can't do that with kids. You need you to have a, a much more thorough plan with kids. Right. And honestly, so we had fun. And I'm not saying we that did. We I had would, a lot I would of toss fun. that fun away. But I am saying that that desire to do things the right way ended up flipping a system that now I'm going to be 60 year old with a, you know, a, an 18 year old. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and so not that, that that math's all wrong. Don't don't. I was going to say, no, that. that math is wrong, but whatever. Uh, yeah. 30 year old should be. Yeah. But anyway, um, so, you know, uh, in many ways, I feel like we're talking about the value of traditions versus this modern age where some of the traditions are being jettisoned. And yeah. I'm all a fan of jettisoning traditions at sometimes, but I do think if when it, it comes you. to family and when it comes to, you know, developing, you know, some of the things I'm never a person that says jettison what works. And I think that sometimes in people wanting to eject or reject some of the things that they feel like might not have worked in their individual case. Yeah. And sometimes it's like you're giving up something that there might be some value in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's the idea of being parents, right? Like yeah. you want to give them what you did have uh -huh. and then what you feel like you didn't have, give that to them as well. Right. 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 So there's and, this and, and recognize that no flow. matter what, you'll never do it perfect. There's always no, going to be a flaw in the system. No, no there's no. always a fly in the ointment. So you're going to just do your best. Yeah. In many ways that we try to teach them to just do your best. And so when we're That's talking about these matters, ideas of like right? who proposes to who, you know, every relationship is different. If it works for you, it works for you. It wouldn't have worked for me. No. Necessarily because I had these very strong ideas about wanting to be the head of a household. Yeah. And wanting to be the how man weird, of the house. How weird would it have been? It would have been very weird. If I'm like, oh, And what's interesting I... about this, the, this thing that we don't talk about is that a woman pretty much tells you when she's ready to be married. So you were talking about it. So it was like I knew it, it wasn't a surprise. We have uh, been together eight years, bro. Yeah, yeah, no. And no. And, and 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 let me say this too. I wasn't like when we first started dating, I wasn't even sure that marriage was for me. Right. Well, right? you were also drinking the Kool-Aid on what was what was it, what wasn't for you based on your ideas of marriage and the Yeah, yeah. Uh, the representations you had seen. Y yeah, yeah. So like we started dating when we were twenty years old mm -hmm. and I just didn't I just the idea of being married with kids was like, ugh, I don't know that I wanna do that. Right. But right, I love right. you and you're handsome, so let's keep going out. Yeah. You know, and then we fell in love and then that just sort of 
I feel like I had an idea of that we would be married earlier, but it was you that, did. It was that that end piece of I knew I had not grown up enough uh, to be, a and husband. some of that not growing up is you know, um, I knew I wasn't out of school yet. I was taking my time on that. Yeah. Um, the, sort of those aspects of, and, and to be honest, I'm in this now. You know, we've been together for a very long time. I'm still not fully a grown up, uh, but. I, I don't make some of those choices anymore. <laughs> is the easiest no, way to I remember that. we were um, together for six months and we had been dating and we had been having a very good time. And you came over to my house and in our house, we have, you know, my grandparents house, we had a basement and it's basically like a music room, right? It had a TV and a couch, mm-hmm. but you know, my and grandfather had instruments and the piano and I played the piano and I played, um, Moonlight Sonata for you. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, I'm going to marry you. And yeah, I'm like, that guy was a fool. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's so romantic. Mm-hmm. You cute. I like you. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. You know? I don't even like, what was my criteria? You played the piano. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, she could have my kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, you didn't say have your kids until later. Yeah. But you're like, I'm going to marry. I'm going to totally going to marry you. Yeah. But I, I mean, we had, you had a skill. But we had we had had great conversations before that. Yeah, yeah we had a lot. We talked going. every day. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. No, there was a lot that worked. There was a lot that worked, but you know, when you're a twenty year old, twenty one year old kid, like it's just like, mm-hmm. you know. But I, honestly, with a lot of the relationships that I've seen, when you know, you know, mm-hmm. right? Um, whether you're ready or not it is a different story, and you need to be. Um, prepared for that like so there were things that we needed to do before we could really be married and so I feel like once we actually did get married we had gone through the things that prepared us to be married to be to do this thing to do this to do this thing yeah it's a lot y'all it's a lot it is a lot it is a lot no let no one tell you that it isn't a whole like responsibility to be someone as we said before there's a lot of compromise yeah like every day that is yep. you know what choices am I making and yep. how do I make those choices in a way yep. that benefits the group and not just myself yep. and not everybody's built for that a lot of people think they want it um, there's a lot but they have no idea there's what a it lot takes less lonely nights it. for sure like yeah. I'm a different person when they are all out of the house and I gotta be by myself I, I yeah. don't like it um, even though there are times where everybody's in the house and it's nothing but noise and energy and I'm like oh my god can everybody chill out yeah um, but, but, but like too quiet is too quiet yo. too quiet is too quiet it's scary yeah yeah, it's every time. There's yeah. like, oh, there should be like, I should be distracted. I should not have this much free time. Yeah, like yeah. I remember I went to Chicago and I was like, what am life? I even doing that yeah. I deserve this much free time and quiet? Yeah. This is wrong. Every time you go on a conference, you're like, man, it's super quiet. Here. Yeah, it's wrong. It's I mean, wrong. And there's a part of you that enjoys it, and then there's a part of you that's like, what yeah. am I doing with my life? Right. <laughs> this is not who I should be. I yeah. should be the guy who's being beset on all sides by the needs of small people. Yeah. Um, we're way over. Yeah. Again. Some of this is going to get edited this a down. Good, this is a good discussion. But it's been though. a good discussion. So, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, in the end, I fall in the I can't be proposed to camp unless it's by Halle Berry. At which point, uh. yes, Miss Berry, I will be your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the, the wife I already have. <laughs> we'll work that out um, amongst she us. She didn't ask. <laughs> but if she would, if she were to, the answer is always yes. The answer is always yes. Yes. Oh, geez, Louise. <laughs> Anyway, it's time for us to go yes, <laughs> on that note, on that note, <laughs> before I ruin the marriage I do have and then I'm happy. <laughs> right. For the sake of Miss Barry. You know what the music means. You know what the music means. Our time is up. I say good day, sir. I say good day. The Hall Space Podcast is brought to you by Hall Productions, LLC. Show notes and credits can be found at our webpage, thehallspacepodcast.wordpress.com. Any questions, comments, or concerns can be sent to us at thehallspacepodcast at gmail.com. The show is written by Dagger Pin Davis. Music is curated by DJ Cabal. The show is produced by Chuck Jones and recorded at Slash and Trash Studios. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more, Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you all have a good week.
House Hall. We rise brilliantly.